Hi Stampers, this is Jennifer Timko from Stampin' on the Fly. Today I'm going to show you a very quick video on how to create a watercolor wash behind a stamped line image. It's a really easy way to create this watercolor look and uh, not a lot of stress, no muss, no fuss. Alright, so we're going to get going here. What I have done is I have taken a piece of watercolor paper from Stamping Up and I have attached it to one of these little cardboard chipboard pieces. They come in a lot of our Stampin' Up kits um, to keep the product safe and they're perfect for something like this. I just used some wa old washi tape um, to tape this down. Painter's tape would work just as well. Washi tape's what I happen to have in my stamp room so that's what we have. I did cut this. This is four and a half by six which is half a piece of watercolor paper. I cut it generously so uh, that I can cut it down when I'm done. All right we're gonna start. I'm just using my ink pads. I'm gonna start with Mossy Meadow and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze this ink pad and there I'm going to have, you can see, this lovely palette of color. The, I'm going to start, I'm just taking a fat paintbrush, a little bit of water, you can hear me off the screen, and I'm going to go ahead and paint just a wash of plain clear water onto the paper to start. And this will help the ink to start to move around and look like a watercolor paint. Then I'm going to take that same brush and use it over here in my palette, and I'm just going to start applying. If you feel like it's a little too wet, um, use a paper towel to uh, dry off your paintbrush and um, come back in like this, okay? And you can see that this there's not a lot of finesse to this, and that's okay because that's the look you're going for. All right, and then I'm going to take that, put it, the, my paintbrush in my water, clean it off, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing, and this time I'm using Lost Lagoon. Again, this beautiful, beautiful blue. It has just a little bit of a gray tint to it, which I think is really pretty. And I'm gonna pull the blue in and kind of just start creating kind of a sky background. Um, I'm not being very precise, as you can see. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave room here. I went ahead and stamped my image. This is an image from Bloom with Hope. It's a hostess set. And I stamped it over on um, a positioning sheet and you can see here um, I'm kind of just using this as a general idea for placement um, because this is wet I just got the back of it wet so I am going to dry it off from behind and you can kind of see um, what I've done now because this is so very wet I am going to leave it to dry actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the low setting of my heat tool to dry this paper off a bit um, I'm going to turn this off I'm going to dry the paper and I'll be back in just a second okay I have it mostly dry and I forgot to tell you before one of the reasons why I taped this down here is um, it does help the watercolor paper keep from warping as you add all this water and then add a little heat to dry it so I just find that it kind of keeps the paper a little bit more straight so that my end product uh, causes me less trouble alright so now using my positioner sheet I'm going to go ahead and decide where I'm going to put my flowers and they're just randomly okay I have my green base and my blue sky um, and I'm going to take rich razzleberry now I did actually in confession start with blackberry bliss but it was just a little bit too much depth of color for this and I couldn't see the stamped image so well so blackberry bliss was just a little too much rich razzleberry has a bit of a um, lighter shade of purple and um, it worked perfectly for me on the uh, second go so because I want a little bit more precision on this one on my color placement I'm gonna use my uh, watercolor um, blender pen here and um, we're gonna go with that just so I can put the color a little bit more where I want I just squeezed a little bit off I'm kind of drying it off a little with my fingers and I'm gonna come in here to my palette again and you can see where the positioner is and all I'm going to do is kind of just lift it up out of place and start to kind of put a little blob of color and when I say blob um, that's probably a nice word um, and it really is just a speck of color and every single time you do this it's going to be different um, same thing I'm going to kind of decide where I want this one I kind of mark it and I'm going to come in and do another one 
and you can decide how much, how big of a swath of color you want behind it. And that's it. Um, I'm going to clean off my uh, brush here and close my ink pad. And now again, I'm going to let that dry. But before I completely do, I'm going to come in with my wet paintbrush and I'm just going to kind of flick on a little bit of water here. Um, and that's going to, when it, as it dries, it's going to pull a little bit of color from the um, different spots and add again a little bit more to this watercolor look. So I'm going to go dry this again with the low setting on my heat tool back in just a second to finish it for you. All right, everything is dry now and you can see how pretty these little water spots are. And again, you're going to just get a different look every single time that you do this. Now, what I'm going to do is, because this is perfectly dry and I don't intend to put any more water on it, I'm going to use my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. You could also use Stays On Black if there was any chance that you were going to come back and be adding any more water. So what I've done is I have, again, my positioner sheet right here, and I'm going to just decide where I want my flowers, how I want them to align over my ink spots here, and I think that's going to be about right. And I'm going to use my little T-bar positioner here and get that into position. And now that that's ready, open my tuxedo black ink and just ink up my flower. Make sure it's nice and inky. And then come straight down. And I'm gonna hold it for just a little bit to make sure that ink has time to fully absorb. I'm not gonna move my T-bar in case I need to overstamp this in case with the watercolor paper, it does have that texture to it. So I wanna make sure this is fully inked. Nope, that's perfect. It's exactly what I want it to look like. Perfect. So now what I'm gonna do for the rest of the card here, I'm gonna bring it back in for you so I can talk about the final details. What I did to finish it off is you can see I took a symp or the sympathy sentiment from the same stamp set, Bloom with Hope, and I stamped it on again with the tuxedo black ink from Memento. And um, when I cut this down, I cut this inked panel down to three and three quarters inches, and that left me with this kind of border. Now my background here is actually a pool party piece of cardstock. But when I put this watercolor on top of the pool party, what I found was that this paper looked a little too harsh. I can't, you know, it wasn't like it was bright. The color was absolutely perfect. But so I didn't like the look of it and I wanted it to have that soft look just like the watercolor does. So what I did is I cut a piece of vellum cardstock to four and a quarter by four and a quarter, which is the same size as this card. This is actually an eight and a half by four and a quarter piece of cardstock. And you can see the difference. There's a little bit of the vellum side and then here's the part without it. And I just simply attached the vellum and you just put all of your glue here in the middle under where your stamp panel is going to go so that the vellum stays perfectly secure and nobody sees the adhesive and this part doesn't have any adhesive behind it. And then I put this image up on dimensionals and there you have it. Quick, easy, and really beautiful. Um, I thought this was a perfect sympathy card with the colors, but certainly you could brighten them up and uh, make it into something very happy. I am so glad you joined me today. I certainly look forward to seeing you again soon at Stampin' on the Fly. Thanks so much. Have a good day.